Hi guys, I'm Shmi. Hello and welcome back to the channel where today I'm here with Jeff from JR Garage. Now we've met at various different events, but we've never previously filmed something together. So we are finally here in the Arizona sunshine to take a look around at some of the cars. We're going to be exploring through the collection, the cars that are here in the hangar, plus over to the garage. But we're talking the likes of some of the Boxster projects, the famous $850 Mercedes, the FF with one of the highest mileages in the world, and plenty of other that you can see here that Jeff will show us around in just a moment. Plus, we're going to go out in something a little bit later that I don't think I've ever been in before. The gated manual Ferrari 575. In fact, I don't think I've ever been in a 550 or a 575, despite all of the V12 Ferraris I've been lucky to experience. So looking forward to that. Right, let's go find Jeff and let's have a look around. <laughs> Tim. Jeff, how you doing? Meet again. It's been a little while. Welcome to the JR Hangar at the JR Garage and all the cars that we have here today. You're going to see most of them, I think. About uh, about 40 of them, I think. That's not bad going. Yeah, not you bad. have even more. Your collection has expanded exponentially in recent years. Yeah, since last time we saw each other, we have quite a few new toys in the garage. Some <laughs> airplanes and stuff, too. And... Uh, Quite a few things we can chat about. So yeah, we're talking the likes of the Rolls, the oh Barrage, the 575. But what we don't have is a yellow car in the hangar. So <laughs> how about we work a deal? All my cars in the hangar for your car right here. Okay, just kidding. But that thing is sweet. We're gonna hopefully go for riding that later. For Definitely, my we can do that for sure. Okay, awesome. You've rolled up in this today. A right. very nice looking FF. Right and. Was I mistaken or did you ask what paint color that was? <laughs> I, I, I did briefly and that just shows you something, doesn't it? I tricked you for a second. It is the Anosa Tech Vampire Red, which really does a good job mimicking that uh, like Rosso Fiorano, I think it is, the darker. Yeah. What's the one that you said, Rosso? It's like Rosso Fuoco, but it's a bit darker than that. Exactly. It's like a dark red metallic, really pretty. It's filthy. Apologies. It was just no, in it's Sedona. Daily running, right? I know, just in Sedona. And it was snowing and salt all over the roads. But hey, this is an all wheel drive car that we can take anywhere and not be worried about putting miles on it because guess how many miles it has? It's a lot, isn't it? It should show up right here. You can have a quick look. <laughs> See what the 80, number is. We just crossed over 86 thousand miles just for the proof here we go <laughs> gotta light it up you know ferraris usually have what 10 20 000 miles 86 000 86 000 miles. miles so this might be <laughs> i don't know one of the higher mileage ffs out there maybe the highest in the world highest i've ever seen and uh we got a great deal on it still running well it's running great oh look at this i mean obviously you know the big uh big v12 engine but yeah. this one is still super clean and pretty and hasn't given us many issues we had a few things to take care of evap leak a couple little leaks any uh, four-wheel so drive system issues oh huh. interesting you mentioned that <laughs> oh, it's, planes are gonna, gonna go overhead all the time but uh we did have a big scare 100 miles after i bought it it starts just dumping out transmission fluid ptu fluid all over the ground and we're like oh there goes our front ptu this sucks this is what we're worried about you know yeah. whatever it is 10 20 30 thousand bucks for a new one and it turns out it was just a line leading to it. So $200 fix <laughs> and we're back in business. So this car has cost us very, very little to have. Beautiful V12. I mean, you had one of these, right? I did have an FF. I had an FF, had a Lasso and have another Lasso. And you put quite I'm a, a big fan. Right, right. P I feel like you either love them or you hate them. People it's Marmite. Are, it's very Marmite. I love them, but people often say, oh, this thing is ugly. Like, what's the need? Four seats, you know, wagon shooting brake car. No need. It's not a real Ferrari, but it truly is. This thing is a beast. All wheel drive. I've just realized I said a very English phrase. It's very Marmite. You don't have that here, do you? Marmite? What is that? <laughs> it's something people either love or hate in England. Oh my goodness. <laughs> like a spread you put on your toast. <laughs> Never heard of that. Never heard of that expression. But yes, that is exactly this car. I happen to love it. People hate it. But oh, speaking of another thing that people love or hate, you got to see what we did. This yeah. is very controversial, but uh, okay. the stars in the roof. Oh, really? Can you, can you pick that up? Have you done a starlight headliner? Yeah, I usually wouldn't be a fan yeah, of it. Yeah, I can just about make it out. Because there's no sunroof, I figured, you know what? It would look cool because it's just one piece of Alcantara that we did. So it, <laughs> it, it, it fixed the drooping down headliner. So yep. we, addre we addressed that. So you by had doing... to address it. Yeah, so why not do stars on the roof? I agree. That's what I figured. But I agree. 85,000 bucks. What'd you pay for yours? I bet a lot more than 85,000 bucks. A lot more than that, but it was a few years ago as yep. well. <laughs> so not nice. bad. So that's the daily running. Yes. And here you have a whole variety of cars. There's a few few more in here. And yes, quite quite the variety. Going back to 1951, going, you know, to modern, to twin turbos, to modifications. Say, so, wait, to... twin turbo Gato spider, 355. Right. I mean, a, a Boxster, that's one of your yeah. rebuild cars. Uh-huh, right. 
Rolls Royce. Should we, should we just kind of start here? Yeah, I guess let's go one by one. Wiggle um, through a little bit. So you've had this color wrap on yes. one of your cars, right? On my GT4. The uh, purple. Looks magnificent. Purple, midnight, metallic midnight purple, purple, whatever yeah. it's called. Yep. And uh, this car we bought with 25,000 miles, got a super good deal on it. Some old guy had it, you know, did all the maintenance. It was just pristine. And then we've put about 25,000 miles on it. I mean, you've seen a ghost before. It's just clean. So that's why we put the bag yeah. on it. I was going to say, keep it away from the... Arizona dust. Yeah. It is just, it'll so quickly get on the paint and just, you got to wash it again. So anyway, um, really big sticker on this, 300 and something thousand dollars. It's got, you know, the rear screens and stuff. Are we open. Uh, of course it's locked, but locked rear, the moment. rear screens and- uh, Folding out screens and yeah, stuff. Yeah, it's been great, very reliable. So love this car. Uh, In front, Gallardo. Yeah, so- Because am I moving us on too quickly? No, I'm saying twin turbo V12 to twin turbo V10. True. Now. Obviously, a lot of your videos way back involved Gallardos, Murcielagos, car keys getting dropped on Rolls Royces, <laughs> maybe not. <laughs> You're right. That, that was our first big, big break on YouTube was driving my Lamborghini to high school at 17, which was, oh my gosh, almost six years ago now. Time flies. But that video was uh, what a lot of people found us through and that got what, 25 million views and uh, that was our first LP560. So since then, we've loved Gallardos. I think they're a great car especially when they have twin turbos. Yes. And Although, uh, this, this is a new one we haven't even revealed to the channel yet. So this is a oh, really? sneak peek. No, it's okay <laughs> to show it, but this is kind of to replace our crazy green Verde Ithaca stick twin turbo Gallardo yeah. that we sold. It was a lovely car. We loved that thing. So we had to get back into a twin turbo V10 and this will do that. So need some work. Need some work. But that's yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah don't no, no look up there, but it's, uh, <laughs> it has seen better days. I think you can explain that one on your channel yeah, soon. Yeah, <laughs> stay tuned for my video. It'll be a good rebuild. Um, and then you have like a Fisker Karma. Fisker. How many of these do you see? Not that many. I mean, right. over the years, I've spotted a few of them around, but it's right. a very unusual thing. Right. So people think, you know, it's some concept car. If you don't know cars, you don't really know what it is. You think it's some brand new quarter of a million dollar car, right? And little do they know it's like, you know, 25,000 bucks, a tenth of that. Yeah. And uh, it's cool for what it is. We bought it basically, long story short. Previous owner uh, had a rock chip. Rock came flying on the highway, hit like right here, and it shattered the whole glass roof. Very yeah. like thin break. So we just wrapped over it, and it, did, it you know the solar roof doesn't do anything yet. anyway. So not a whole lot of charge. But Henrik Fisker was of course previously designer at the likes of Aston Martin. Right over which, there. Which we but got one of those I'm right skipping there. us past the Bentley. Right. <laughs> Flying spur. Yes, uh, just did a polish and ceramic coating to say, it. That's why. That's looking right. very, very clean. And what if I told you this car was crashed one point and, and only 14,000 bucks? That's wow. Uh, yeah, very, very cheap. And um, we're rebuilding a lot of Bentleys lately. Another one's over there yeah. because we have a Bentley parts car. So we're just fishing parts off of it and re ah, rebuilding a bunch of Bentleys. So clever. This one was all smashed up in the front and uh, now it's good to go. Perfect. Nice car. These, these, I think for the money, Flying Spurs, Bentleys, these early cars are 35 grand it's like it's such a good luxury value for the money yep, but crazy. i don't know that's just me especially something like a mulsanne now yeah yeah but exactly looking around what is that exactly what in the world is this thing okay so now we're throwing it back to 1951. uh this was a little bit of an impulse person uh purchase i saw it at auction i did a little digging and then i found out it's actually a very rare car I could use some help in the comments if somebody knows exactly what this car was, but it's a Mercedes 220, which in and of itself isn't a very rare car. The four doors are only worth like 10 grand, but anything with two doors is really rare. Yeah. So the convertibles are quite rare. And then the coupes are the rarest at only making 85 of them in 1954 and 1955. But this is a 1951. So it's like a pre-production hard top conversion. So it's really weird okay. to value and understand, but yeah, anyway, cool car. So. Uh, just got to get some new fuel pump in it, rebuild the fuel pump and a couple other things and that'll be running. 355 Spider. Yes. Let's take a look at that. This is so cool because I've been wanting to do a full garage tour for so long, but it's so hard, like getting all the cars together at one point, but this is a big chunk of them. A lot are here right now. So good timing on this, but I'll eventually do one of all Everything the missing cars. Yeah. There's probably still 20 or 20 more. Or so stick yeah, yeah. 95. Bought this car for only 25,000 bucks, but the engine blew, uh, the engine was blown <laughs> up. So Small we, uh, butt. yeah, we had our uh, Ferrari mechanic swap in a challenge motor that was sitting on the shelf somewhere else. So new motor, and then uh, he just did timing belts, fresh service. So all in all, we're in it pretty cheap for a stick 355. It's worth a good amount of money. It's just filthy. I don't think you parked them close enough. 
<laughs> right? You're trying we, to squeeze We have to much. pack it in. To go three deep, we have to get them basically touching. Because this is one of the cars that you had to do a whole lot of work on. Yep, this is, we just started posting some videos with this one. We bought it from auction and it had been sitting for about four to five years. We got it super cheap because it was non-running and with unknown mileage. We bought it. Um, it turns out it just needed basically a jump start, but also a rear body control module, which we got for 200 bucks, swapped that in, and now it is perfect. 40,000 miles, 987S, six speed, worth probably three times what we paid for it. Amazing. And it's, I love this car. People, yeah. think, people think boxers are not real Porsches and they're the girls Porsche or whatever, but I love them. For the money, I think one of the best sports cars out yeah. there. I don't know, would you agree? Like, you no, get... for sure, I've, I've had two Caymans. Okay, you know I'm the drill. big fan, yeah, yeah, yeah. Wonderful cars, Caymans are even better, sure, but in Arizona, it's nice to drop the top on these and uh, have a nice sun Definitely. in your face. So what else do we have? Uh, like? The other British car in here, are, aren't oh, you Oh, no, no, let's some... come to that, let's come to that in a second. Okay, 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 let's fair enough. A second. What else do we have, we've got the 308? Uh, yes, Ferrari 308, similar deal, had been sitting for about 10, 20 years, and uh, we just resurrected it out of like a garage find and had our Ferrari mechanic go through it, and now it runs pretty well. Super fun, sounds cool. It's, it's the Carb 308, so one of the first years, yeah. and really, really fun to drive, I was surprised. And what's up in front? An old Fiat that I impulse bought for, it was 16, <laughs> it was 1600 bucks at auction, and it had <laughs> Corvo seats and a bunch of good maintenance done to it. It's pretty clean. So you're like, go for it, why not? Yeah, I mean, why not? You know, some of these things, I, I gotta help myself buying <laughs> these things at auction, but you know, you wake up one morning and you go to Copart or whatever, and you just, you just bid on things, and then you happen to win them, so. That's one of those things that we gotta, we'll probably give that away. I don't know, occasionally every few months we just give away a car to celebrate the next milestone on the channel. Ooh. Yeah, we're getting close uh -huh. to this, but that, that needs some work. Yeah, this one needs a little bit of work too. We have all the parts. Yeah. Now we just gotta put them on. Got the bumper, got the fender. Luckily I found everything already painted white, so we didn't have to do any actual Perfect. paint work. They'll just swap right on. GTS. So yeah, yeah, that's pretty nice. Just kind of a case of time with all of your other right, activities yeah. and businesses and everything. Exactly. And then, uh, rain fell on this guy so it's a little dirty but ah. 09 speed so 600 horsepower these things are again a lot of a lot of car for the money especially the speeds and the super sports and we just picked up a super sport as well so before we talk ferrari and aston 370z okay it's not just any 370z i promise i know you're looking at it going why is that in the garage let me tell you it's only got 2800 original miles on it and it has some crazy modifications the uh the biggest one would be under the hood gotta show you real quick so it's got an exhaust and all that stuff. We saw that, but after we bought the car, I swear, I didn't even know this when we bought the car. <sighs> Couldn't believe it. It's twin turbocharged. <laughs> now who would modify their car with only 2,800 miles and then just park it? This thing was sitting for eight years. So we bought it after it was sitting, had a shop go through everything, all new fluids. The, the gas tank was rusted out, terrible smelling gas. You know, replace all that and then now it's running again and making a ridiculous amount of power. We just dyno tuned it, 564 wheel horsepower, what? and 509 pound-feet of torque. This okay, thing, I didn't see that coming. This thing is a missile. It's a manual GTR with the top that goes down. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, it's like a time capsule, 2010, 2800 miles. That's crazy. Well, from one lovely two-seater to a two yeah, plus two. Brothers from another mother, I guess. But this, so. we've got to point out, firstly, is a Virage, which is super rare. Yes. People don't really realize um, that. A lot of people don't know this car exists. They go, what's a Virage? It looks like a DB9, Yeah. but it, they made it for, I think, two years. Do you know, 2011, Was it like 2011, 2012? 2012? Yeah. This one's a 2012. They made very few of them and they were really expensive when new, so I don't think anybody bought them. And then they just waited for the new DB9 to come out, which was basically this car. Yes, because they basically was... borrowed some DBS parts, didn't exactly. they? Exactly. It was supposed to slot in between, but nobody ended up buying it because it was $240,000. There's just a DB9 with like carbon ceramic brakes and a few other bits. And then the new DB9 came out with more power, carbon ceramic brakes, and 30 yeah. grand less. So, <laughs> so the it, it's is like, where does this one slot? So they discontinued it, but This great is car. also an Ozotec. This is Midnight Green. Yes, again, I color... apologize for how filthy these cars are. No, it's good, it's good. It's the same color I had on my I, Taycan, actually. I really like this color, and Ozotec yeah. is just, they make some of the best wraps and coolest colors. And it fits, right? British racing green, yeah, kind of British, so we figure why not. We only paid, uh, $34,000 for this car wow. and uh, had just a little bit of front end damage. He hit a curb and we replaced it in a day. Uh, my brother and I just tackled it in a few hours for about a thousand bucks we fixed it. Lower control arm oh. and a wheel. It's very simple. Not too bad. And now it's looking good. 25,000 yeah. mile V12 singing. It's just mm, top down, love this car. <laughs> Lovely looking thing. Talking about V12s then that sing. 
Aha. The 575. Oh this boy. you've had for a couple of months, I believe? Uh, no, actually like a couple of years. Is it a couple of years? Back in 2020, we bought this. And okay. again, it had a little front end damage. And it was really tough finding the parts and getting it all rebuilt because COVID and all that stuff. So did you only drive it for the first time a couple of months ago? Yeah, we've driven it very limited. Okay, um, <laughs> that's my confusion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Occasionally I'll post on Instagram, people are like, oh, I forgot about that car. Just It just, you know, sits all pretty and trying yeah. to... Not trying to keep the miles off it's just you know with with so many cars you can only drive so many at one <laughs> one time what are Let's we rosso corsa off. rover crema oh that's looking nice oh it is it is beautiful you would never know this car was in an accident yeah and well, we can work a deal tim if you like this car <laughs> come on i tell you what take this home to the uk well you're gonna have to take us out in it shortly oh please this is nice i think i'll convince you after we drive this yeah all right look the gated manual ferrari v12 generation I vote that we come back over to this in a moment because we need to go and check out your other oh, space right. first. Shoot, I forgot about all the other cars. All right, <laughs> I, want to, I want to drive it. Oh my goodness. All right, let's go. Talk to me about these two. All right, on our way to the other garage, we have a couple things sleeping outside. Uh, that's our 6.0 Power Stroke Ford, which is what our, just our tow vehicle and stuff. But uh, one day it was not there. It disappeared because the cartel stole it and they took it to like Mexico <laughs> and they were running a bunch of slightly illegal things. Your car and got it's... stolen, used for illegal purposes, yes. and now you've got it back. And then a month later, we found it. It was terribly beat up. Poor thing, I feel so bad. That thing has <laughs> probably seen so much illegal stuff that I don't even want to know. <laughs> and then uh, Cayenne Turbo S yeah. with the Earth brakes. People don't realize these have the same, I think, 410 millimeter carbon ceramics. Ah, okay. So at $23,000 for the car, the brakes are worth like half, half that. that. So yeah. I was like, why not? A new set of ceramics is not a, um, not a cheap upgrade. <laughs> exactly. Um, so. And this it's, is why you keep the cars covered, for anybody yes, wondering. Yes, they get dirty they, fast. But Turbo S, you don't see many of these in $175,000 sticker price. They were not cheap new. And right. uh, it's a neat little car. Ultimate tow wagon. Yes, that's the idea. They, they stole our truck, but we have a new tow vehicle now. Perfect. No, it's just so kidding. funny. That, that'll, that'll probably be our uh, Ford Lightning EV. That'll be the new okay. tow vehicle. But. <laughs> Yeah. Although I hear things about towing with those and the range and stuff. Mm, That's yeah. a topic for right. another yeah. day. Yeah, don't drive 80 miles an hour in the winter. You're going to have <laughs> very little range. That's for sure. <laughs> right to the garage. I think we found some chaos. Yes, a lot of chaos. Welcome to the OG GR garage, which is half laboratory right now. As you can see, we've got science equipment everywhere, which that's a whole nother story in and of itself. We're not going to get into, but it's one of our <laughs> latest side hustle business ventures. Anyway, we've got some cars here uh, um, and a Jeep. Standing next to your Jeep, yeah, yeah. which is quite uh, hard to show. Because... Old CJ, and then uh, we have an old Triumph Spitfire over there, which you were telling me is uh, nothing special over in well, the Well, no, UK, it's a right? fun little car, right? Okay, but, but like, you see, they're pretty common over there? Quite a few around. Okay, yeah, there are not too many here, so I was like, oh, cheap. British Roadster? Sounds fun. Let me buy it, until I realized I don't even fit in it. I didn't know how small they were. And you're quite tall. I had no idea. <laughs> six foot six, I don't fit at all. <laughs> oh, well. Yeah, oops. Um, 968 Turbo. That'll be a really fun one when we reveal it on our channel. It's got so a whole. So that's not like, being shown yet. No, not that one Secrets either. Here. Another exclusive special. <laughs> yep. So that's uh, um, it'll make a ton of power, 400 something horsepower. It's a fully built motor, eight valve turbo build. It's it's pretty nuts. Looks that'll like it fun. needs a tiny bit of work though. Yeah, that one got hit in the rear. Dude got rear-ended at a red light. Poor guy. He really loved that car, and then insurance is like, nope, ours um, now. We don't want to fix it. Yeah. So we bought it from insurance. Twin turbo V12 S600. That's mm. not the OG. That's that's the famous one over there. We'll We're get to that. To <laughs> yep. But twin turbo V12 for three grand. Cheap. Had to buy it. Three grand. Yeah. Why twin not? turbo V12 engine for three grand. Yep. That's silly. And then we have a ton of 944s running around. My brother and I love those. That's how we got our start. Cheap 944s. Those yeah. were our first cars. 944 Turbo was our first car. Bought it cheap. Fixed it up a little bit. Sold it for a nice profit. And then since then we've loved 944s. And now they've really started to catch on and go up in value. Oh, and that's a six-speed SLK 350, which is rare with the manual. Probably yes. not rare where you're from. Every time I post some, we bought a rare six-speed manual, whatever, Mercedes, people are like, this is not rare in Europe. Every car is manual. You Americans yeah. are weird. Every time. <laughs> Every time. That's how but, we feel. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry. No one can drive manual here. So, right? we'll just, squeeze just, through. Yeah, go by the incubators and the scales and climb on over here. Another <laughs> boxer. Yeah. 981. This thing, also sweet, 18,000 miles. Insurance totaled this car because they claimed it needed a new engine. Okay. But it was just a crack in the oil pan. So all we did was replace the oil pan and it's been good ever since. Perfect. That's it. That's amazing. I like how you find cars like that. Yeah. Like stuff that's not too 
Right. Crazy. We try to just. But there's hunt. a skill to it. Like you need to know what you're looking oh, for. Oh gosh! If you just go buy any auction car, you could get into big trouble fast. But yeah. if you if you try to weed out <laughs> the bad ones and focus on the good ones, then you should be off to the races. Like this one. This was a good one. Fifteen hundred dollar V12 CL600, clean title, seventy nine thousand miles with ten k worth of recent work before we bought the car for fifteen hundred bucks with fees twenty two hundred bucks out the door. Which is ridiculous. Yeah, clean title, no damage. It was a donated charity car. I couldn't believe it. We gotta drive this thing more. Poor thing. It's it's beautiful condition, but Just been flaking sitting dust. for a bit. And now it's trapped behind all this other stuff. Yeah. Anyway, uh, S six hundred. Let's see if we can make it over to that. I was gonna say talking about stuff. How do we get there? <laughs> Maybe come, I stand come here. This way. Come all the way around. <laughs> here we go. Oh my goodness. Because this is this S six hundred has been quite here a story is. for you guys. The famous S six hundred. Yes. Holy moly! It has not been touched in years this poor car because it's like a famous probably the most famous s600 uh w220 like millions of people have watched this car yeah probably <laughs> that series probably got like 10 million views on our channel <laughs> rebuilding it this was 850 dollars at auction bought it because it had a v12 and it was cheap and then it was a little damaged a couple doors we had to replace fixed it very cheap off with junkyard parts and then our buddy painted it for a good deal and yeah throw some wheels on it and here we are, <laughs> but it's, you know, it's got like the executive leather seats yeah. and massaging, you know, these cars, I mean, they're, you can see they're, a bit they're cool, but they're a maintenance nightmare. They are a maintenance usually. nightmare, which is partly why you can get a twin turbo V12 for $850. Exactly. Yes. Well, this is technically naturally aspirated V12. That's oh, sorry, a twin yes. turbo. But still, I mean, yeah, they're, they're uh, expensive maintenance. The ABC system, yeah. ugh, just on and on and on pumps this actuators that's you know two spark plugs per cylinder so the coil packs are ridiculously expensive anyway let's go see the other 10 cars outside cars cars and more cars yes uh here's what three 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 eleven cars more <laughs> we ran out of space in our garages so we just started parking them and taking over half the parking lot and uh, we have a few more oh we'll keep these quick you know since they're nothing too special they're sitting outside after all but wrx uh with some nice mods sounds cool whatever never had a subaru like that so they're pretty fun for the money another boxster we're going to get into this one soon on a video um let's just say our, our luck with boxsters might have run out with that one oops <laughs> w210 mercedes cheap just all these things are just cheap you can't pass up the deals but then i realized <laughs> We never get around to fixing all of them, my brother and, and I, so. Every extra car you buy is another that you have to like register and deal with all the taxes. Exactly, and... we were talking about that. We don't have a dealer's license, so it's just like, I have to register each car, get insurance on it. Like keeping track of that is becoming a nightmare and I really gotta start selling some more cars. <laughs> so if you're interested, hit our line, we'll sell any of them for the right price. A 45,000 mile Accord, okay? We do all cars and I, yeah, I love all cars. Right I don't know. It's a Honda. It's boring, but it's 45,000 miles. Uh, 944, another one of them. We painted that one brown and 325 <laughs> cheap. Uh, blah, yeah, yeah. Another Boxster. <laughs> we'll fix that. 944 S2, pretty rare. 944 regular, crunched up. Yeah. Uh, we just needed it for the seats. We buy a lot of 944s for the seats. If you know, you know, just go watch our channel about that one. It yeah. will explain it. But ML63. 63. <laughs> ah, yeah. What, what's going on here? Um, is that, that's not stock front. I think it is. Yeah, is it? This, this is 2011, so it has a different hood and a, I think a couple different bits. It's the final okay. year they they, uh, they changed a, a little bit of the look. So maybe that's why aftermarket wheels. That's kind of fun. And then the OG, we've had this car for a long time. The baby Lambo we call it because, yeah. you know, V10, S6. Yeah. So it sounds cool. Kind of sounds like a Lamborghini in a way. And there you go. Boom. It's a cool lineup. <laughs> yeah, we, we're, you know, we're still missing about 20, 25 cars, but Stop this out of shots. Yeah. Yeah, the, uh, oh geez, I mean, Ferrari 458, the gated manual converted F430, the Bentley Super Sport, like I said, 997, the 911 Turbo, a couple Maseratis, five, 10 cars at my house, all the electric cars, and uh, it's, <laughs> it's a lot of fun. You'll come, come back next time, I'll show you the others. Is this stock? Yes, uh, pretty much completely stock. It does have 2B rear section and non-resonated X-pipe in the middle. So it sounds a little bit better, but <laughs> it's nothing too crazy. So it's it's pretty tame, but it has a great Italian V12 sound. The rest no, of it, nothing too crazy, stock. just a casual 2B. Yeah, exhaust. stock, and it's got you know some wheel spacers to take out the wheels a little bit. We didn't do that, previous owner did, and it looks good. So if you're ready. Should we get it started and put it out? Okay. Oh, hang on, mobilizer. <laughs> we all know that problem as well. Uh, 
on, got to click it again. These stupid immobilizers. I never, okay, here we go. There we go. <laughs> click, 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 click. All right, now I think we got it. Come on, it's cold. Nearly, nearly. Come on, you can do it. There we go. Out it comes. Of course, the 575 was the follow-up to the 550, the predecessor to the 599. 575 had a number of changes and updates and things, slightly facelifted, refreshed, a little bit more power, a few other things that were done to it. This is looking very clean in the iconic Ferrari livery and paint. <laughs> <laughs> Excited by the shifter. <laughs> Here we are, 575M. I don't think I've ever noticed that, 575M Marinello. Right. Yeah. I don't know why, I just kind of assumed the M stood for Marinello. Exactly, I noticed that just the other day actually. I was like, it's kind of odd, didn't know that. Double M. So Ferrari naming conventions right. are the most bizarre things in the world. So you've never been in one of these things? Nope, I don't think so. I F1 so. or six speed, neither. Nope, no wow. 550, no 575, okay, no cool. Super America, no Barquetta. All right. Kind of All right, well, this, this will be fun. Yeah, one of, um, I believe, 80 that were brought to the US. That's really cool, only 80. So pretty rare, and I think 246 total worldwide production. So it's quite quite the rare thing. Yeah. They go for quite a bit on bringing a trailer with a clean title and no accident. This thing would be worth a lot of money, yes. that's for sure. Sounds quite nice in the background, although they all do this. Yep, they, Ferrari leather on the dash, it's going to shrink no matter what. Especially there's, when they're in hot places. Exactly, there's no avoiding it. Arizona will just cook that and it'll just shrink back. So it's, you know, you gotta, I think, remove the windshield and it's a big job to replace that. Oh, so really? It's we, a we windshield? Haven't done that yet. Yeah, I think. And then, you know, the reupholster of the dash. So I don't know, I might do that at some point. <laughs> but other than that, I know the car is. That's nice, like the rear deck. Quite the nice. The stitching and the, the straps and things back there are lovely. Right? Yeah. So that, that little clunk in the background of every oh, shift. It's just the best. Just, I love this gearbox. I think it could be one of the best. I love our gated Gallardo, but uh, I think this might have it beat. Very yeah. tight suspension with that sport mode. So this will adjust suspension. Well, I okay. guess maybe shift points on the automatic cars, but this, I think yeah. it just does suspension, maybe throttle response. Interesting. Uh, yeah. And what you were just saying is that this this was kind of the same era as the Mercy, Mercy Lago. Both on paper seem similar, but they're very different cars. They're both V12s yeah, so that you could have gated. V12s. Shifted in. Similar horsepower. I think this is like 520, 515, something like that. So Mercy Lago, obviously, five, whatever that is, 80. So a lot more Little power more, there. But, but still over 500, this thing really goes. I was surprised how how quick it get up, get up and goes. Yeah. But yeah, they're nice for a nice drive. I mean, manual is just you got to remember best. that it's a GT, right? It was, it is a, a grand touring car. It's not like a supercar. It's not a mid-engine. Exactly. Yep, yep, yep. The market was just cruising with a lot of power and and comfort. I think it's a pretty comfortable car. You can be a bigger person and fit in it nicely. I have plenty of room, despite being pretty tall, and yeah. I enjoy driving it. A lot of fun. I'm actually quite surprised. I don't know really what I was expecting. It's quite it's quite calm. Yeah, it really is. The 599 manual, have you driven a 599 manual? Not a manual. Okay, so those... I've heard this drives better than the 599. You would think yeah. the 599 manual would be better, but I've heard this is better. So. Well, there are only a handful of manual right. 599s in the world, right? Right. It's yeah, like that's 13 true. or something, or I don't even know. It's it's a very small number. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, 30, I think. Like, that clunk is incredible. The best. Oh, nice shifting. I Thank see you. what you've done there. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, it's just the best, and the, the feeling is amazing. So yes, of course, I can only say so much. So you have to experience this. Oh yeah? Yeah, I gotta get behind the camera and film you. <laughs> so you can First see drive in the 575. Yes, I mean, just... Oh, <laughs> so good. Right, okay. yeah, I'm doing it my way around. Yes. Oh, funny. Yeah, okay, <laughs> right, you're, you're used to that. Okay, <laughs> first shift. Yep. Oh, Come yes. On, isn't that good? <laughs> oh, yes. Into third. Oh, it's this is satisfying. So good. Better than our Stick Mercy Lago. That it's is a, very satisfying. Just such a nice feel to it. Such a nice sound. That's really, right. really clean. I thought you'd like it. I'm actually impressed. I mean, that's just 
low rev range second gear. Uh -huh. But I'm impressed by how get up and go that was. Uh -huh. It pulls nicely, obviously, NA engine. I was surprised. I don't know why yeah. I thought it would be some slow old Ferrari when it's like just as quick, quick as my Mercy Lago. Yeah, and also, okay, it's only 500 and something horsepower, but what you have to remember is that 500 and something horsepower in a car that's much lighter than modern stuff. Mm -hmm. Indeed. And with that gearbox, it just makes it. With an, with an F1 automatic, it just, it just wouldn't be the same. Something about the clink clink and those squeaky brakes. Golly, it sounds like carbon ceramics, but they're not. Oh, really? Says, when did Ferrari go completely standard carbon ceramics? Uh, 2008, I think. So everything oh, since then has always been yeah. carbon ceramics. Exactly. So these, these are old steels, but they squeak. The pad. Yeah. Come on. It's isn't very isn't clean. It nice? Yeah. I thought you would like it. Glad it is. It, is it Tim approved? It is Tim approved. Okay. It's very clean. Nice. I mean, I'm definitely starting to think about more older Ferraris for my collection as well. Exact guys, comment um, down below if this video gets ten thousand. <laughs> if this video gets ten thousand likes, we'll force them to buy one. Uh, I think your viewers would love an old Ferrari like this, and they're probably going to keep on going up in value. This would be a great investment. It's a true story. Yeah. Ferrari is the brand. If any brand is going to have future proofing in terms of investment, it's mm -hmm. going to be Ferrari, like for sure. Agreed. Um, <laughs> yes, the shift. People think driving a gated car is like difficult. Like the shifts would be weird, but I keep no, telling them like it's really natural. They're, they're more natural than without it being like that. Right. It just goes, and you can only put it in one place, right? Exactly. It's through the gate. Back to the hangar. Here we are, indeed. So pulling back in next to your <laughs> lovely FF. It's brother, or it's uh, it's grandchild, or something, something like that. Something like that. Son. So reverse that way. Mm -hmm. There's something also about pressing it down like that to pop it into reverse. Right. It's very satisfying. Mm -hmm. Again, just moving it between shifts. Oh, Ferrari right. have done a lovely job with that. I'm going to park it very untidily for the sure. moment. Oh, that works. Thank you for letting me take this for a little drive. How do you rate it out of ten? Oh. put me on the spot here. <laughs> You've really put me on the spot. I'm definitely, as much as I love this, I really like the lightning fast dual clutch shifts mm. of the 812, for example. Tough to beat. Yeah. So for a gated experience, how For a gated rate? experience, it's above where I expected it. Nice. I think I'm gonna, I think I would like a little bit more drama, a little bit more excitement from it. Right, so I'm not right, gonna right. go overboard, but I think I'd give it something like a seven of 10. Heck yeah. All right. That's about where I'm gonna put it. Awesome. Well, it exceeded your expectations for what you thought it would be. So that's that's, that's the key thing. Happy to hear that. And happy, Lovely. Happy to share it. Thank Thanks you. Let for me drive it. Such good care of it. I just inadvertently discovered that if you should touch the loud pedal with oh. the uh, window open, it's a little bit louder or with exactly. the door open. <laughs> oh yeah, that's good. Here, you okay, gotta get one better. from the back. Let me hit. Let me hit yeah, the yeah. Go to the back. Okay. <laughs> okay, that's that's not bad. That's epic. It's actually impressive how quiet it is inside. Right. Considering. Must be a ton of sound deadening or something. A whole all those. lot. Yeah. And now we've set the coolers off. Pretty cool. Well, thank you for the drive. Thank you for showing us around. Probably Absolutely. two thirds of your magnificent car collection. Oh, about. So thank you so much for coming. I'm glad we finally linked up. I was like, Tim, you gotta come by. You gotta come by. And now you're in Scottsdale, so I have to show you around the garage. It's been epic. Thank Dude, you for that. Thank you Everyone, so much. Go check Jeff's channel if you'd like to find out more about some of the cars we've talked about and some of the things in the future as well. Coming soon, right? Thanks for coming by. See you guys. This has been a whole lot of fun. I don't think Jeff has ever really shared a collection video like this. So a really cool opportunity. And for me as well, because I've seen so many of the videos with the $850 V12 Mercedes, with some of the other cars as well. And now to have gone out also in the 575 on a lovely afternoon out here in Arizona. But that's it for this time. Do check out Jeff's channel if you don't already, the JR Garage, to see what him and the team are getting up to and everything, him and his brother and all of the other guys part of keeping all of this running. They're a very, very busy group. They've got a lot going on, but it's amazing what they do with all of the cars too. That's it for now. Thanks for watching guys. And I'll see you again very soon. Cheers.